Good morning. Welcome to worship. Today is the eighth Sunday after Pentecost, and we're coming to you today from Grace Lutheran in Visalia. Thank you for receiving us into your home, and we pray God's blessings upon your worship today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought word and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of the word, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Today's Old Testament reading comes to us from Deuteronomy chapter 7, beginning at verse 6. For you are a holy people to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you out of all the peoples of the face of the earth to be his people, his treasured possession. The Lord did not set his affection on you and choose you because you were more numerous than other peoples, for you were the fewest of all peoples. But it was because the Lord loved you and kept the oath he swore to your forefathers that he brought you out with an outstretched mighty hand and redeemed you from the land of slavery, from the power of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. Know, therefore, that the Lord your God is God. He is the faithful God, keeping his covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love him and keep his commands. Here ends the Old Testament. The epistle reading comes to us from Romans chapter 8, some very familiar verses. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his Son, so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, How will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who is he that condemns? Christ Jesus, who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble, or hardship, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life Neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Here ends the epistle. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again, and then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. And again... The kingdom of heaven is like a net that was let down into the lake and caught all kinds of fish. When it was full, the fishermen pulled it up on the shore. They sat down and collected the good fish in baskets, but threw the bad away. This is how it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all these things? Jesus asked. Yes, they replied. He said to them, Therefore, every teacher of the law who has been instructed about the kingdom of heaven is like the owner of a house who brings out of his storeroom new treasures as well as old. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ.
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Share with you again three verses from today's Romans epistle, beginning at chapter 8, verse 37. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's the word of the Lord, and out of that today grows our title, our theme, nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing. Do you ever have questions? When you do have questions, are you sometimes able to come up with good answers? Or at least answers that seem good to you? As I was thinking about this for me, my mind jumped back, way back to 1978. Wow, amazing to think that that's just shy of 42 years ago now. Back to the day I arrived on campus at Concordia College in Portland, Oregon. Up the stairs to the top floor on the south end of Centennial Hall. Making a longer story short, Dan, one of my brand new roommates, put up some posters on his side of the room. Several of the posters were inspirational and brought a smile to my face because they pointed to the Lord and to his care for us. Another of his posters also brought a smile to my face, but this one for a different reason. It was a close-up picture of a chimpanzee, a chimpanzee that was scratching its head, and the caption above it read, Just when I figured out all of life's answers, they changed all the questions. Do you ever feel like that? Yes, I know that's a really dumb question right now, especially as we've ridden the rapids over these past four months or so. We've always experienced some of that, right? Figuring out life's answers and then the questions seem to change. We've always experienced some of that. But lately, many of the good answers that we had all figured out have been rendered useless. Useless because the questions keep on changing. Today we are blessed by our Lord through his Apostle Paul with a question that has stood the test of time. It stood for 2,000 years. And more than that, we're blessed with an answer that has stood for 2,000 years. And yes, even more than that, an answer that will never change. The long-standing question, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? And the never, ever changing answer, no one. As one commentator has said, the judge of mankind has spoken. No one can reverse his not guilty verdict. Christ sits enthroned beside his father who, dare, who dares to raise a voice against his intercession for us? No sufferings, no powers, seen or unseen, no aspect or dimension of all creation can henceforth separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Or, as we summarize in today's title, today's theme, nothing Nothing, absolutely nothing can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing. Let's review that list, the list of potential possibilities. Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? Can any of the above separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ our Lord? No. No, says Paul. In all these things we are more than conquerors 
through him who loved us. And Paul's faith just goes right on talking, doesn't it? He says, for I am convinced that nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Not death, not life, not angels, not demons, not the present, not the future, not any powers, not the highest heights, not the deepest depths, not anything else in all creation. Nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing. Wow, what good news. News that we celebrate this day. News that we are really given to celebrate every single day of our Christian lives. Maybe you've learned that it is okay. Okay to shut that other stuff off. The 24-7 cycle over and over and over again. So much so that today's good news can easily be drowned out or overlooked or even forgotten. Yes, it is okay to shut that other stuff off. The other stuff through which our enemy, the devil, would try to seduce us into thinking that we are separated from Christ more so today than ever before. But today we say no. No. Nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing can separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ our Lord. In Him we are more than conquerors. Have you ever thought about what the Apostle Paul means when he says more than conquerors? It seems to me that he is saying that when you consider affliction or hardship or peril in the life of a believer in Jesus, not only do the disasters of this world not separate us from Jesus, they actually draw us closer to him. In all these things, we are more than conquerors. In life, we live with Jesus. In death, we die with him. And because we die with him, we also rise with him. Death, so far from being a separation, is actually a step into his nearer presence. Our soul, our spirit returns to the one who gave it. And then on the last day, the resurrection of the dead. And from there forward, in person, with him forever. Until that day, Nothing in our present day and nothing in our future. Nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing can separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Nothing can separate us from Him. And whatever we face that seems like it could, for the believer in Jesus, it only serves His purpose to draw us closer to him. And if you're not quite sure about that today, or even if you are sure at this point in your life, I challenge you to page through the New Testament Gospels. If you're in a hurry, jump right into the Gospel of Mark. It's the shortest one. And Jesus is always, I think it's 41 or 43 different times, Jesus is always immediately moving from one situation to another, where he sees opportunity to draw people closer to himself. In the midst of whatever is afflicting them. As a for instance, consider these few examples from chapters 4 and 5 of the Gospel of Mark. 
There's the one case in chapter 4 where Jesus and his disciples have just left the crowds. They're in a boat. They're crossing the sea. Jesus is wiped out from a long day with the folks. And he crashes on a cushion in the back of the boat. And a furious squall pops up. And the disciples' first thought as the boat is taking water, we're going to drown. And so they wake him. And they say, Jesus, don't you care? And then, with his word, he draws them from their fear closer to himself. Rebuking the wind and rebuking the waves, he says, quiet, be still. And a question that draws them even closer. Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. And then, they land on the shore, and a man with an evil spirit comes out of the graveyard to meet him. The evil spirit, actually a legion of them, they are not any match for Jesus. Come out of this man, he says. And they do, right? Into that large herd of pigs, and then they go on toward their visible destruction in the sea. But the man is found dressed and in his right mind. And he's closer to Jesus than ever before. And now he's got a life-changing message to bring home for all who will hear of his Lord. How much Jesus has done for him. And then right after that, the father of a dying girl. Please, Jesus, come in and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. And... While Jesus is on the way to answer that prayer, he stops along the way to care for another. A woman who had suffered much under the care of many doctors. She'd spent everything that she had, and yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. But her sickness brings her closer to Jesus. And in his care, in his healing for her, Jesus takes her even closer to himself. But just then, the bearers of bad news, the sad word to the man, your daughter is dead, they said. Why bother the teacher anymore? And Jesus basically says to the dad, no bother, really, no bother. Don't be afraid, just believe. And you probably know the rest of the story, right? Jairus and his daughter, his family. Jesus gets to their house and goes right through the commotion of the mourners, right through their wailing, and with his words that they think are laughable, Jesus says, why all the commotion? Why all the wailing? The child is not dead, but asleep. And Jesus, he doesn't care about the laughter. He doesn't care about the ridicule that comes his way. His only care is for parents who've suffered the death of their daughter. He goes in to where she was. He takes her by the hand and calls her back to life. Little girl, I say to you, arise. Yes, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing can separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ our Lord. What, what great news, right? What great news. Hey, how about some more good news? Maybe you've already heard or maybe not. Either way, it's still good news. In these days of our online worship, beginning this coming Wednesday, July 29th, we will be offering outdoor communion in the courtyard on every other Wednesday evening. Yes, even in the midst of times that seem only to separate, we will celebrate. We will celebrate the Lord's Supper, His body broken for you. 
His blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing can separate us from our God. In the name of Jesus, amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts, your minds faithful in Christ unto life everlasting. Amen. We speak the words of our Christian faith. Today we use the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Before all the changes we've gone through this year here at church, we normally at this point in the service have opportunity to return to the Lord of our gifts, our tithes, and our offerings, freely given from his bounty for his work in his world. Whether we send it through the mail or do the offering online or just drop it off at the church office, opportunity to give still abounds. Let us pray. O oh, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, how great is your power and wisdom and goodness. This is clearly evident in your glorious works of creation and preservation. They fill us with awe and wonder. We worship and glorify you, our maker and our preserver. Grant that we may always hold you in sincere faith as the true and only God of heaven and earth. Watch over our bodies which you have created and supply them with all that is needful and good for this earthly life. Guard us continually from harm. Defend us from every danger. Deliver us from all of our enemies. Be our refuge in trouble and in sickness. Be the same for all of our shut-ins, O Lord, for each person listed by name in the connection page, and for these we name silently before you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our God, we glorify you also as our Redeemer and Sanctifier, in you alone we find the answer to the needs of our souls. Graciously help us cling forever in faith to our Lord Jesus Christ, who has redeemed us from sin by his own suffering and death on the cross. Keep watch over our souls. Provide us with every spiritual blessing that we need to keep our faith safe and alive and growing. Let nothing separate us from our Savior, nor hinder us from inheriting eternal life. May we search your word diligently and prayerfully to the strengthening of our faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. To you, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, to whom belongs power and mercy and grace, we commend ourselves for safekeeping. As your adopted children through faith in Christ, we humbly yet confidently ask for your continued blessings, especially the forgiveness of our sins. Oh, hear our prayers for Jesus' sake. Amen. Together we pray our Lord's Prayer. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. With open ears and hands and hearts, receive the benediction of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Yeah.